Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome back to my channel, welcome if you are new. Today's video, I would like to introduce to you my brand new 12th generation legacy challenge that is based on the current 13 Disney princesses. Now I know there are other Disney princess challenges out there, but I wanted to create my own, which I felt fit the films a bit more and flowed nicely between each princess and generation. This is nothing against the original challenge. I just feel like there have been a lot of additions to The Sims 4 since this challenge came out and I really wanted to try doing my own thing. Um, so I've tried my best to add as many game features as I can to match the stories for each princess, but a lot of it might be down to your own storytelling. But feel free to adjust any rules you see fit for your stories, because this is supposed to be fun, so tell your own stories, add your own elements, but hopefully my rules will be there to guide you. The way this challenge is laid out is that every generation has a prologue and then a set of rules, so the prologue is there to establish the generations, and it will typically require a bit more storytelling and gameplay with different family members as opposed to rules and requirements. So you can use the prologues in any way that you would like to set up your princess's stories, but the requirements are there for where the main part of the stories would actually begin and when the official generation would take over. As you may know, with a lot of the older princess films, the mothers often die when the princesses are quite young. And I know a lot of people hate the idea of their sims dying, so if you would like to forego this rule, that is completely fine. If you don't like the idea of the previous heir dying before the next heir is even a child, then you can skip over this. But I would instead recommend maybe moving the mother out of the household and having no contact with them again, but it is completely your choice. One thing I would really appreciate is that if you do this challenge, please credit me, and I would also love to check out your posts anyway, so it helps notify me that you've been playing this challenge. And you can also use the hashtag GPrincessChallenge on any tweets or posts or videos. Again, it's just a nice way to link all of the videos and posts together and it's easier for me to look for them. It did take me a little while to decide what hashtag I wanted to go for. There were some really excellent ideas and suggestions that people gave me. But I've decided to go for this one because it is straight to the point and it's not too long because for a hashtag you don't want it to be taking up too many characters um, and I want it to be quite evident as to what this challenge is actually all about. So before I introduce you to the generations I would like to say thank you to three lovely simmers out there who have really helped me with this challenge. So firstly thank you to Simbex Blue, who actually was the one who inspired me to finally start writing my own version of this challenge after I started watching your LP on YouTube. I've always wanted to write my own version, but watching your challenge really, really got me into gear and got me to write this challenge. So thank you. Literally without you, I wouldn't have written this challenge. Um, and you've also always been there um, replying to my messages from the start and giving me feedback and ideas and you've just been so enthusiastic and keen. Thank you to JackieStir626 because your notes and feedback for each generation were so detailed and really helpful and honestly so inspiring. Like you put in so much effort and it really really is appreciated especially with the Pocahontas generation because slight disclosure I have not seen Pocahontas um and at Jackie you kind of helped me out so much with this one like I read the synopsis but you gave me some excellent ideas for this generation in particular so thank you very much the last thank you is for Nicole Susu as you also sent me some excellent additions for this challenge which helped me pad out the generations and made them more like the films such as with the Snow White generations and making the dwarves personalities match theirs in the film and also just avoiding apples I really liked those ideas <laughs> and also just your interest in the challenge has just been so encouraging and so appreciated so as we go into the generations i will just be reading out the prologues the traits and the aspirations just because this video will be so long if i read out all of the requirements but you will be able to see the requirements on screen and a little screenshot and i will also be linking the challenge in the description below so if you are interested definitely go and check that out but let's begin shall we we will start with generation one which is of course snow white snow's mother must die when she is a child and her father should remarry a jealous and evil woman. When Snow becomes a teenager, her father must die so that Snow is left with only her stepmother to raise her. Her traits should be cheerful, loves the outdoors and good, and her aspiration should be big happy family. The general gist of Snow White's generation is that she is raised by her stepmother, um, who she has a really awful relationship with and she can never leave her home neighbourhood. 
but then as a young adult she will leave this toxic environment and move into a cottage and raise seven dwarves. Eventually she will marry her prince and they will move out into a castle and have baby Cinderella. Generation 2, Cinderella. Snow White dies when Cinderella is a child and her father should remarry an older lady who already has two daughters. Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters hate her and are always mean to her when her father isn't around. And as if history repeats itself, Cinderella's father must die when she is a teenager, leaving Cinderella to be raised by her stepmother who hates her. Her traits should be romantic, neat, an animal enthusiast, and her aspiration being soulmate. The general idea for Cinderella's generation is very similar to Snow White's to begin with, where she is trapped in her home and is made to do all of the housework. Cinderella also has a connection to the sages and spellcasters from the magic realm and this is quite important for the next generation um, but she must also then obviously go off to the party and meet her prince and she must wait for him to find her before she can run away and get married and then she will have one daughter as well who will be Aurora. Generation 3 Aurora. Cinderella must throw a baby shell when Aurora is born and invite the three sages of the magic realm but not the fourth evil spellcaster who she previously met as a teenager. Cinderella and the spellcaster must lose all their relationship. Cinderella must send infant Aurora to live with the three sages in Glimmerbrook to protect her from the other evil spellcaster. Aurora's trait should be loner, family oriented and lazy, with her aspiration being beach life. The idea for generation 3 is that Aurora is raised by the three sages instead of her parents. She'll fall in love with someone that she met in the forest and then when Aurora becomes a young adult she will return back home and she will be cursed and the sages and the prince must rescue Aurora. Once she has been rescued she'll marry her prince who is actually a mersim and and they will move to Solani and Aurora will become a mermaid and have seven mermaid daughters, the last of which will be Ariel. Generation 4, Ariel. Aurora must die when Ariel becomes an infant, leaving Ariel's father to raise his daughters alone. He must befriend another mermaid who will help him with all the children. And when Ariel becomes a child, her father must cut ties with this mermaid and not allow her to have any contact with the children. The traits for Ariel are socially awkward, child of the ocean and clumsy, with her aspiration being the curator. The idea of Ariel's generation is that she must only really be friends with mermaids, but she will sneak away at night so her dad won't see and she will try to become friends with regular sims. And eventually she will run away from home and become a regular sim. Um, but she is not able to use any friendly or funny interactions um, with her crush. She can only use romantic interactions with them in order to build this relationship. And only when they have a full romance bar can they actually kiss and she will find her voice again <laughs> and they can use friendly interactions. And then she will stay human and get married to her prince and have one daughter who will be Belle. Generation 5, Belle. Ariel must die when Belle is a child. Belle and her father move to a small town and he must focus on robotics. Belle mustn't have any friends growing up and she should instead spend her time with her father or reading books. There is an attractive teen, Gaston, in the small town who has a crush on Belle but she has absolutely no interest in him and always rejects his advances. Her traits should be bookworm, loyal and genius with her aspiration being best-selling author. Belle's generation was probably my favourite to write because the idea is that her beast is actually going to be a rampaging werewolf. She will start with a really negative relationship with the werewolf or the beast um, and then she must slowly build a friendship and only when the friendship bar is in the green can they start looking for a cure so that the werewolf can become a regular sim and then eventually when the werewolf is cured they can get married and have one daughter Jasmine. Generation 6 Jasmine. Belle must die when Jasmine is a child and Jasmine's father is still scared of the outside world because of his past so he should keep Jasmine locked in his castle for her safety. When Jasmine's elderly grandfather dies Jasmine's father is left alone to raise her so he must enlist the help of an adult spellcaster Jafar to help him look after Jasmine. Jasmine's traits are hot-headed, self-assured and high maintenance, with her aspiration being chief of mischief. For Jasmine's requirements, she must go on quite a few blind dates that her father arranges, but she never has any interest in them. Eventually, she'll sneak out and meet her Aladdin, and then she'll go on a date with him. There will be a big fallout with Jafar, and Aladdin will come and rescue her. And after this, they can get married, and they will both stop living as royalty, and they'll actually move to the forest and live off the grid and move in with two other sims who also have a baby 
and um, Jasmine and Aladdin will have one daughter for Qantas and this new group of Sims will become like a little tribe ready for the next generation. Generation 7 Pocahontas. Jasmine must die when Pocahontas is an infant and Pocahontas should be raised by her father and the tribe that they will live with. There is a young boy who is similar age to Pocahontas and the two must grow up as best friends. Pocahontas's traits are loves the outdoors, ambitious and green fiend, with her aspiration being angling ace. For Pocahontas's generation, she should get engaged to her best friend, but she'll actually have no romantic interest in them. And eventually she will meet a stranger who she falls in love with, but this stranger is completely different to her and her whole family hate him and his family and there'll be big fallouts and in the end she won't have any romantic relationship with this stranger or with her childhood best friend. She will instead as a young adult fall in love with an adult sim who is actually a retired soldier and the two will get married and have one daughter Mulan. Generation 8 Mulan. Mulan never has any interest in traditional expectations and she grows up very active and playful and never has any romantic relationships as a teen. Mulan has a strict relationship with her mother who wants her to be more normal but has a closer relationship with her father. Mulan should be active, loyal and bro with her aspiration being bodybuilder. Mulan's generation is also quite a fun one. When she is a young adult she will completely change her appearance and she'll move out of her family world and in with a group of men who are all soldiers and she will join the military as well. There's a lot of working out and quite a lot of fighting and eventually she will have a fallout with the group and then she will end up saving them and winning loads of fights and becoming friends with them all and falling in love with the group's leader and the two of them will both quit their jobs in the military and they'll get married and have one daughter Tiana. Generation 9 Tiana. Tiana should have a very close relationship with her father growing up and after leaving the military, he wants to pursue his dream of opening a restaurant, so he should join the culinary career, but before he can reach level 5, he must join the military again and die. Tiana should be left to be raised by her mother, Mulan, and the two are now quite poor since she and her husband left the military. Tiana's traits are foodie, ambitious and overachiever, with her aspiration being master chef. For Tiana's generation, she's going to work really, really hard throughout her teenhood and her young adult life, but at a costume party dressed as a princess, she will meet a royal sim who has being cursed with the curse of repulsiveness and Tiana will also get this curse and she and this cursed sim will have to work together to find a cure and they will visit Selva Dorada together and explore the jungle and then eventually they will fall in love and get married and they will open a restaurant and they will have one daughter Rapunzel. Generation 10 Rapunzel. Because of her parents curse and connection to magic Rapunzel is born with powers and long golden hair. An old lady kidnaps Rapunzel when she's an infant running away to a locked tower hidden away from Tiana's castle. The old lady, Gothel, is immediately young again and will always stay this way when she is around Rapunzel. Rapunzel's traits are creative, paranoid and cheerful, with her aspiration being renaissance sim. Rapunzel's generation, she is trapped in the tower for most of her life, she can't leave the lot, um, so she works really hard on loads and loads of different hobbies. On her young adult birthday, she meets a stranger and she quickly befriends him and they kind of run away together and make loads of friends, but eventually she's found by Gothel who actually kills her lover. But one of Rapunzel's hobbies is gardening and she has actually grown a death flower and she is able to save her lover. So Rapunzel and Flynn Rider will be able to move back in with Rapunzel's family and she'll be able to meet her parents again and she will get married and have two daughters who will be Elsa and Anna. Generation 11, Elsa and Anna. Elsa inherits her mother's magical abilities and is born a spellcaster. Anna has no abilities, but the girls still have a strong relationship. The girls' parents are worried about Elsa's ability after Anna gets hurt one day, so they lock Elsa in her bedroom and Anna isn't allowed in. When the girls are teenagers, their parents both die. Elsa's traits are loner, proper and erratic, with her aspiration being inner peace. And Anna's traits are goofball, outgoing and family oriented, with her aspiration being friend of the world. For Anna and Elsa, you'll be playing them both as co-heirs, so you'll play them simultaneously and not one after the other. So you'll follow the Frozen story, where they will have absolutely no relationship growing up. But when Anna becomes a young adult she will meet a stranger and get engaged to them on the same day and this will cause Anna and Elsa to have a big argument and fall out and Elsa will run away to Mount Komorebi and as Elsa is a spellcaster when Anna finds her she will accidentally use the Chilio spell on her sister and freeze Anna. Eventually once Anna is thawed out Elsa and Anna can build their friendship again and they will become best friends and Anna will break up and fight with her fiance and she will end up getting married to the person who helped 
to find her sister in Mount Komarebi. Elsa will stay living in the castle and start making friends with people in the same world as her, whereas Anna will marry her new lover and move in with his elderly mother and the rest of their family, and they will move to Solani and have one daughter, Moana. The final generation, Generation 12, is Moana. So Moana grows up in Sulani with her whole family. She loves the water and is closest to her grandmother more than her own parents. The island is filthy and destroyed by environmental changes and Moana vows to make a change when she is older, but her parents think she should focus on the family and the land they live on instead. Moana's grandmother agrees that she should go off and follow her dream, but she dies when Moana is a teen. And Moana's traits are child of the islands, child of the ocean and adventurous with her aspiration being eco-innovator. Moana's generation is all about cleaning Sulani so she will move out when she becomes a teen and have no contact with her family until the island is completely clean and saved. She'll meet a young adult man who she doesn't have a very good relationship with at first but eventually they will build a friendship and they will clean Sulani together and Moana will join the conservationist career and then become best friends with the man. She has to find the heart of Sulani which is a treasure collectible. Only when the island is clean and Moana has reached level 5 of the conservationist career can she then return home and join her family and at this point she is able to quit the conservationist career and join the civil designer career instead and she must always encourage her neighbours to vote green and live in a green neighbourhood. So there we go, there's my challenge and I really hope you like it. Um, I had so much fun writing it and it was so fun trying to see if we could create the Disney princess story in The Sims 4. There's quite a lot of details in the requirements which would hopefully help you understand the prologues um, a little bit better. Um, so hopefully you were able to follow along okay but as I say the challenge is actually linked below if you would like a little bit more information and to read out those requirements but yeah there was no way I'd be able to read them all out in this video we would just be here for so long and I also hope you have enjoyed watching me recreate the princesses in this video as well they were so much fun to create some of their clothes are like the exact same from the films and some are more like interpretations but I hope you think I did a good job with them as well as the actual challenge I think this is a good note to end at the video on so if you have enjoyed this video and you like the challenge please do give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments and if you decide to give this challenge a go please do let me know i would really really love to see and i would love to hear what you think of this challenge and if you have found my channel today through this video then please do consider sticking around and subscribing i would really appreciate it and i will speak to you all in another video bye everyone